Welcome everyone to this video in which we're going to look at how you can debug JavaScript, that is JavaScript that is not intended to be executed by the browser using Visual Studio. Microsoft provides the Windows Scripting Host, which is a series of scripts and environment that allows for a number of languages, supported languages such as JavaScript to be executed natively on the system. This is often accomplished using CScript or Wscript.exe, and it's not uncommon during the process of performing malware analysis to encounter these type of scripts, in which case then you may need to debug them. Well, we're not going to get into the specifics of this particular script. I'm going to save that for another video. I did want to provide some reasons why debugging might be a better option instead of performing just static analysis. As you can see with this particular script, through the little bit of code that we're going to look at in the main viewer, as well as the mini view, it is rather extensive, and the amount of obfuscation that it employs is quite onerous. So analyzing this completely by hand would be quite difficult. This particular script also exhibits some anti-analysis. And so there's just some IOCs that we're not able to recover simply by dropping it into a sandbox. So debugging this script becomes a pretty viable option. Now, there are a number of tools available for debugging JavaScript, but most of those tools are geared towards JavaScript that is intended to be executed in the browser. And there are some differences, and oftentimes you'll find that with those tools, they begin to break because they don't support the proper methods or objects that this type of JavaScript is expecting. So how can we debug this JavaScript? Well, fortunately, we can actually set up Visual Studio to help us with the debug process. For this particular VM, I have Visual Studio Community Edition 2017 installed. Once you open up Visual Studio, you'll need to go into the Tools, Options, and make a few changes. From the Options menu, you may need to collapse Environment and scroll down until you can find Debugging. From there, expand that and select Just in Time. For me, the default setup for Visual Studio is that this script option is unchecked. This is what you need to check, and that we're setting up Visual Studio to be a just-in-time debugger for our scripts that we're running inside of our VM. You may also get a message here indicating that you have to make this change as an administrator on the system. If that is the case, go ahead and open up Visual Studio as an administrator and go back to the screen to make the change. Select OK, and now you can either leave Visual Studio open or close it. The next step is to open up a terminal. I'm going to do that through Visual Studio Code, in which case you can select View and open up a terminal. From here, navigate to the location of the JavaScript file that you want to execute. You can now use either CScript or Wscript to execute your JavaScript file. CScript is the console host and Wscript is a Windows host, so it just changes a little bit of the output that you would get when executing the script. For example, message boxes. With CScript, it just prints messages to the console. With Wscript, it actually opens up a Windows dialog. So using either one of those, provide the name of your script and then provide two forward slashes followed by a capital X. Once you begin execution, what you should get is a dialog, the just-in-time debugger dialog. And this will allow you now, since we've registered Visual Studio to be a just-in-time debugger for script types, to either open a new instance of Visual Studio or to use the instance that we already have open. In this case, I'm gonna use the instance that we already have open. After making your selection for your Visual Studio debugger, it will open up that file and set a breakpoint at the first instruction at the very top of the script. From here, you're ready to debug, and you can debug this script as you would any other program, setting breakpoints and stepping through the code, inspecting values and making modifications along the way. I hope this little tip helps you while reversing JavaScript-based malware. Thanks, and I'll talk to you all in the next video.